Is it, uh, is it live? Ooh. <laughs> I think I'm live. Oh. I'm waiting on the, I'm waiting on the timer to, uh, to get started. Ooh. Oh, that's all right. All right. That's going to be Tetris the Grandmaster 3 Terror Instinct for the Nintendo Game Boy, uh, for, the, for the arcade machines. Um, it was made uh, in t a very long time ago, in 2005, to be precise. And um, we're waiting on uh, a sequel. Hopefully it, you know, it becomes a real thing. But uh, in the meantime, this is the latest installment yet. And uh, it's by far the most spectacular. So I hope you'll uh, enjoy this very much. Um, I'll uh, get started by showing the basics. And uh, what better way to show the basics than uh, by memeing? So I will uh, use a cheat code. And this cheat code is called Big Mode. Big Block Mode. And we're gonna go Big Block Mode on the thing. Um, there's kind of a reason why I do it. It's to make things uh, clearer to everybody. Like, as you can notice, the T is rotating on a, like, on a artificial ground. And um, that's a thing that's really surprising to a lot of people. Uh, the T will not rotate uh, to its core. And everything will be done on some sort of artificial, like, ground. So that's pretty much the, the idea. Uh, behind the whole thing. Oops. Like, I can do this. This works. Uh, there's a bunch of spins that I could try. Oh, am I live? Am I... Whoa, my, my voice is, uh, is quite uh, powerful. Hello, everybody. Uh, it might, there might have been some... Uh, technical issues uh, but in any case I'm um, I'm glad you can see this run so um, yeah so I, I showed you the basics of uh, of uh, Tetris the Grandmaster through big mode because big mode uh, in a lot of ways uh, gets you acquainted to uh, some of the basics that you would see in the uh, TGM rotation system or ARS. Uh, we can do all clears, and they're called Bravos. Um, if you hold, the, so A and C are uh, have the same purpose. Um, they're the same rotation button. Uh, you can use that to do uh, some 180s really fast. Um, so that's pretty much a. Uh, that's some point of interest. Also, in big mode, you'll get a crap ton of Bravos, so that's also that, I guess. Uh, and, um, well, in this version of the game, the it has hold, and uh, hold pretty much takes the piece that you are currently using, uh, and you can put it to some other use. Uh, so you can either... Uh, you're unsatisfied of your current piece, or you want... Uh, a better piece uh, and you know you have it because it's the one that's in the hold queue um, what else oh uh, oh no Crap. Um, the game speeds up quite a little bit um, a little bit by little bit, pretty much. Um, the beginning is kind of nice. It's just the gravity gets uh, fiercer and fiercer. Uh, but then it becomes like something else, and you'll see. Uh, you'll see relatively soon. It's not just the gravity, because the gravity will eventually go to a maximum point. Um, speaking of gravity, so a lot of like Tetris players. Um, hold the button right as the piece spawns, 
and uh, TGM really uh, goes around that way. Uh, by forcing you to press the rotation button or the direction before it spawns, and uh, very often you get rewarded um, by doing so. So, for instance, every time you hear a little, like, sharp sound, uh, that's the... Um, that's the sound of uh, the piece being pre-rotated. And um, not only is it, like, it's good because it makes it rotate at the first possible frame, but that's even better than that. It actually makes the piece spawn in that rotation, in that rotated position. So that's um, also something to keep in mind. Um, generally, a lot of times, uh, when you see the next piece, you know what to do with it. And um, you will see me, like, especially uh, you, you have a good uh, view on the stick. Uh, you will see me, like, prepare my rotation as the line clear animation is going. And, um, yeah, that's a, that's a crucial thing in, um, in uh, all the TGM series uh, games. So, the first one was, I think, released in, um, in 1998. I could be wrong about that. The second one was in 2000. And uh, this is 2005. Okay, so now we have infinite gravity. Um, the pieces pretty much spawn uh, at the very bottom. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, could be fine. Um, we'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that was, it was just messing with you. All according to plan. Um, yeah, infinite gravity, you can see some other factors are actually speeding up, and that is uh, the uh, line clear delay. Uh, gets shorter, uh, the next piece has a, like, shorter entry delay as well, and um, a bunch of other things. Uh, you will see that it will just take every possible factor that is normally, like, part of a, of a, <laughs> a sane, uh, you know, it's supposed to be a, a nice little help to help you understand, like, what your piece is doing, what you're doing out of it. Uh, where you're taking it, etc. Um, all of those factors will become like close to non-existent by the end of this uh, little uh, exhibition. And um, yeah, that's that can be a problem. Um, in this, you can see that I have uh, more and more time to just uh, well, not more time, less time, <laughs> less time to uh, do some crazy stuff, pretty much. Um, and that. Um, in a way, empowers me to place the pieces uh, wherever I want as fast as possible. So that way it gets less uh, quote-unquote boring. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. And so generally the objective, regularly, you have to level counter, that's uh, to the side, like it's close to 900, now it's at 900. Um, pretty much the idea is that you need to get it all the way up to 999. And uh, that's not exactly the lines, it's the lines and pieces that have spawned. Uh, and then in the end you have a fun little challenge. Uh, which you will see momentarily. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the semi-invisible. Um, if uh, I wait long enough, I'm not waiting really long enough, but you'll... Um, 
Okay, so I have some visual cues that kind of indicate me what the heck is going on, but uh, aside from that, I'm in a, I'm in a weird uh, tight spot. And then I just stab a bunch of uh, places with blocks and hope that it becomes okay. Nice. <laughs> calculated. Um, yeah, so that's M9. Uh, that grade is calculated in a weird way. Uh, let's not talk too much about it. Let's go for something a little more interesting this time. Um, we'll connect to our ESA account. And um, if you connect to an account, uh, it's not online, unfortunately. It's dependent to every like arcade machine that exists, uh, or every TGM3 game. Um, the password is A, by the way. Um, Lamau. And uh, we... Um, we will go to well. This is this is very hard. You can see it's pretty hard. Uh, we're not gonna play it. We're gonna play the normal game. The normal game has an examination system. We might get one. Uh, we didn't. It's fine. Um, basically, the game keeps track of um, everything that you do. And um, so you've seen the big mode. Big mode was uh, unlocked. It was on a unlocked account because it's a cheat code you can't uh, actually uh, cheat on a logged account but um, what thing that it will do having an account will be very useful in that um, it will keep track of all of your games and it will try to make you like it will try to promote you to certain grades so you saw I got like M9 okay so that's a grade. And uh, imagine that I'm getting M9 consistently on this account, then there's a small chance that uh, the game will tell me, hey, you're pretty good at getting M9. So this time, if you get M9, you will have it on your profile page. And the profile is the little thing that's on the top right. So right now it says nine. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten a, an examination yet. But, um, you know, it keeps track of a bunch of other different things, uh, like uh, your best uh, score in uh, Shirase, which is like the super hard mode. And um, there's decoration as well. Um, those are little things... Uh, I guess you could call them... <laughs> there's some sort of like... They're insignificant, but... Uh, the more you, the, the better you play, the more you'll get. And uh, it has a max out at some point. You have a big, big medal. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it for uh, logged accounts. Um, I think you will notice something. You'll some, you'll notice something uh, quite soon. But you've seen uh, that the game is a little more talkative. Um, it says cool quite often, and. Um, the reason why it says so is um, it's actually keeping track of the number of Tetrises that I make and uh, also my time. Uh, and time is going to be very important here because uh, um, not getting into the details, but if it will tell me cool if I'm good on time. Like right now, it should tell me relatively soon. Please. Yeah, there we go. So it said cool at the last possible moment. Uh, but it did, so that's cool. And um, if I don't get any of these calls, uh, we won't, like, we won't get the invisible at the very end. Um, and uh, so you, you've seen the semi-invisible. There's actually a full-on invisible. If you've seen TGM, you, you probably know about it. Uh, it's been viral in the uh, OMG Invisible Tetris videos uh, that were around at the time, so yeah. Um, the time constraint is um, 
it can be relative, and in this case it, it very much is. Uh, which is, if I slow down too much in between sections, like I make a mistake, or, you know, I panic even a, just a little bit, um, that will make me miss the cool, so that's uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, in parallel of that, I try to um, uh, style with the uh, ice pins, I guess. I try to um, get a good grade, because the grade is kind of an internal thing. It never tells you what it is or how you can get better at it, but I kind of know how to milk it in some ways. We've uh, reverse engineered it quite a bit uh, as time went on. Oh yeah, this was, um, so, okay, some interesting, uh, point to note here. Um, this is the same mode that, that you saw for big mode, but you can see the speed is, like, quite high. And, uh, that is a consequence of having calls. Uh, having a call actually speeds up the game by 100 levels. So right now it says, uh, level 630, but it's actually more close to level, like, 1230 or something like that. It tries to fetch the data that corresponds to it. And it gives you this, which is... Uh, it's pretty tough. Okay, just hold on a sec. Still got the call, but I'd like to get the next one. I don't think I got the call, but uh, eh, we'll see. Oh, we did. Okay. Okay, so since I had to go really fast, I couldn't go for Tetrises. So I'll kind of milk the rank a little bit. Um, I need to go for doubles, because for some reason, anything that isn't a double or a Tetris is worthless. So... So T-spin is uh, broken. It says T-spin quite uh, erratically. Don't worry about it. Okay, hopefully we'll get the invisible. Yep, we did. Oh no. <laughs> oh load, he coming. I was glad to show you the uh, invisible. Yeah, it's showing play data. There's um, like a pentagram. They really like the, the pentagrams. They like them so much that one of the statistics is actually a random number. Because they, they couldn't take five statistics out of the game, so they basically generated a random number. Um, and um, let's go crazy, I guess. Um, that's going to be the, the tough one. The tough, tough one. Um, no invisible, but uh, a bunch of other gimmicks, and also it will get really fast. Um, so you can see it's already like infinite gravity, and the line clear delay is already like quite short. 
Oh, I don't like this. You want to, um... You want to go for as many Tetrises as possible in this game, uh, because it actually uh, gives you some sort of time bonus. Uh, considering that the main, like, means of uh, discrimination in this game is time and not score. Um, they've, they've found a way, uh, which is basically... Remember what I was talking to you about levels? Um, like how levels are the sum of the pieces that you get and uh, the lines that you've cleared. Well, if you go for a Tetris, you have uh, bonus uh, bonus levels. So if I go for a Tetris, I won't get four levels, I will get six. And uh, if I do a triple, I won't get uh, three levels, I'll get four. Anything uh, aside from that will not give me any level bonus. And considering the fact that I have to be very fast for uh, the game to allow me to go into the second half. Some inputs get, um, some inputs are weird in this game as well. That is definitely a thing that people don't like much about this. But it definitely is uh, pretty, well, it's, I would say it's one of the toughest. Okay, so we got through the first half and we'll have the other like next 500 levels. Um, around a gimmick that's very, very uh, non-cool. You'll see it very soon. Yeah, it's gonna copy the bottom row. Uh, so you want... Yeah, like that. You want your stack to be as clean as possible. Because that way it copies a Tetris well. Uh, but if you have, like, a bunch of holes everywhere at the bottom, that is the worst. It's, like, really hard to recover from those. So, see, I got, I made a hole. I'm gonna fix it in the air, quote-unquote. Because I don't want it to go to the bottom. distribution of pieces though. Nice. This is where the speed is going to get absolutely nuts, so... Yeah, 
Yeah, I couldn't do anything about it. And that was it. It, it fits perfectly into the time, by the way. It's, uh, I, I couldn't even imagine that. Uh, had I survived longer, I would have gone overestimate, but... Uh, <laughs> yay! Um, that's gonna be it for... T yes! Uh, within the estimate. Um, thank you so much, by the way. Um, I'd like to... I'll definitely give a huge shout outs to the TGM community. Um, those people are awesome. I would like to also give many, many, many thanks to the ESA staff and the Movember Foundation. Um, they're great people and uh, they've been really, really helpful with setting up this material because it's hard to capture and it's very uncooperative. So um, thank you everyone for watching and uh, yeah, I'll definitely see you next time. Hello? Hello? Can anyone hear me in the venue? Hello everyone! Hello everyone! Oh, sorry, that was a bit loud, sorry. Uh, I'd just like to quickly tell a story while we were on the uh, the Tetris Grandmaster hype just then. Uh, back at ESA Summer last year, a bunch of us participated in a POPO Tetris tournament with that man that you just saw participate. Would any of you believe me when I told you that he won? It was a massacre, let me tell you. An absolute slaughtering. Uh, we have some quick donations. Uh, I was going to read them out during that last run, uh, but honestly, it was it was so breathtaking, I didn't even have a chance uh, to read them. So I'll do them now in the meantime. 
Uh, Sinewave don donated $5 and said, Best of luck to Qlex on his Tetris to Grandmaster Showcase. Shoutouts to the TGM community. Uh, Shigan underscore donated 20 and said, Boom Tetris for Qlex. Do that easy mode. And then Anonymous donated $5. Thank you very much. Next up is uh, a game that came out very recently, uh, but is extremely broken. It is uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice by Savy, and we have a bid wall for it to choose uh, the fully audioed out, uh, or the full audio, it's uh, fully voiced in all, all sorts of different languages. Uh, right now, the two kind of ones that are in, in the money uh, for you know, contesting are English language and German. So uh, right now, English is at $175 and German is at $103. So you've got a couple of minutes before we start to, if you want German to win or maybe an, even another language, be sure to get those donations in really quick. Thank you. Actually, uh, big debate. We got two more donations, uh, just as I refresh right there. Uh, Adversary donated ten dollars and said, "Kulix is not human." I agree. Uh, he is a machine sent from Planet Tetris to destroy to destroy video games. Also agree. Uh, also, anonymous donated ten dollars with no comment, but thank you nonetheless. I would also like to mention, uh, really quick, that we actually passed three thousand dollars raised uh, before the last uh, intermission. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. I'm, I'm sick. Of, I'm, I'm sick of these like half claps. If you're gonna clap, everyone clap, right? When I clap, everyone claps. All right, we're gonna practice right now. Let's go. Woo! That's more like it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I need to stop ruin, uh, ru uh, ruining the experience for headphone users. I'm just getting too hype, getting too into <laughs> it. I'm just enjoying myself too much. <laughs> uh, as a quick reminder as well, we're still getting set up. We also have some ViewSonic monitors. Uh, if you donate $25 or more uh, by 9 a.m. tomorrow, uh, it's it's also like retroactive, so if you donate it before, you'll be uh, entered into a draw to win a ViewSonic XG240R. And also, if you donated $10 or more, you will be entered into a separate draw uh, for some of the used monitors that we've been using at the event. So $10 for a monitor, uh, it's a pretty good deal if you ask me. So yeah, I'm going to donate $10 to get myself a monitor because I'm going to win. <laughs> yeah, stay mad. Stay mad. And also, thank you to everyone who subbed with uh, Twitch Prime or just regular subscribers for the event. Um, Piprod01, especially. Thank you, sir. Or oh, madam. That's very kind of you. Uh, we don't discriminate here. <laughs> uh, if you do subscribe with Twitch Prime, reminder, uh, it's free if you already pay for Twitch Prime. So it's not really free, but it's kind of free at the same time. I have Twitch Prime. You should have Twitch Prime. It's really good. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link your account uh, with Twitch Prime and get a quote-unquote free sub to a marathon of your choice. And you should pick this one. Or a Twitch channel of your choice. And you should pick this one. Because we're the best. <laughs> Grace and LP to sub with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. Cheese che segment as well. Thank you very much. Uh, it supports us a lot. It helps us, you know, with equipment and transport and everything else that we need to run these kind of events. So yeah, thank you to everyone who subscribed. Smash that subscribe button.
And just as I keep taking my foot off the pedal, I have more and more to talk about. Isn't that incredible? Uh, we have two more donations. We'll get to uh, the first one here. Uh, Talis140.